This is Jason Erickson. I'll be speaking first. Uh, I am the handsome man up in the upper right, and uh, that is in fact an older picture of me in which I had less gray in my beard uh, and more hair in my head, so uh, I do tend to, to favor that, but uh, we need to keep with the times and uh, probably update that for the next session. Well, why are we here today? As Dr. Ghosh stated, and, and it's probably understated on this side, slide, is that the photovoltaic arrays are becoming more popular today. As we try to harness the power of the sun, the engineers need guidance on how to design them. They also have to be designed, obviously, and built. Uh, and the codes and standards currently do not address these directly. There are several different types of, of common systems. Uh, probably one of the most common are freestanding systems, uh, arrays such as these on racks, you know, rows and rows of, of arrays on rack systems. But you also can see uh, carports where in addition to uh, shading the cars, uh, you are also gathering the sun on, on the top uh, to take advantage of, of that power as well. There are residential applications, and these might be flush mounted uh, on the roof as shown here with varying uh, gaps between the, the roof and the uh, arrays. Or you also might have slope systems on sloped roofs. In today's discussion, uh, unfortunately, there are no current guidelines for sloped systems on sloped uh, roofs. So we won't be able to cover this topic uh, with any, uh, any meaningful guidelines. Uh, and therefore, it, it won't be included in today's discussion. There are also commercial applications in which uh, sloped systems are mounted on top of flat roofs and you know, to take advantage of that space as well. And these are what Ron will be uh, talking about later on today. If we look at what we'll, I will be discussing in the first session, uh, starting with the building codes and standards and looking at what we currently actually have in the, in the standards and, and building code and thinking about what, you know, what we need and what we can apply, and then specifically look at guidelines for freestanding systems and then flush mounted systems on sloped roofs. So uh, the freestanding, the arrays or carports, and the flush mounted would be the, uh, like the residential construction, basically. And then, uh, as we said, the second two se sessions will feature Ron LaPlante, and he'll be discussing the SEOC uh, committee report uh, that covers low profile systems on flat roofs. So with that, the building codes and standards that we'll look at today are the IBC and ASDE 7. I believe the California Building Code has something to say on the topic, and Ron uh, does get into that a little bit uh, in his session. Starting with the building code, which is really sort of where everything starts in a design process, in the 2009 IBC and previous editions, there were no provisions that are specifically for either ground mounted nor roof mounted arrays. However, in 2012 IBC, uh, while there still aren't any provisions specifically for ground-mounted arrays, there is a new section for roof-mounted PV arrays. That section is in Chapter 15. Uh, 1509.7 covers photovoltaic systems that are roof-mounted. And there are other items in this section. Uh, we will focus on the wind resistance. That's the topic of our discussion today. And it says there are two important things, really. Uh, the rooftop mounted photovoltaic systems shall be designed for wind loads for components and cladding. Now, that is a key point. Uh, obviously, when you're designing for wind, you could either have the main wind force resisting system loads or the components and cladding loads. So IBC chapter 15 is saying for the roof, use components and cladding loads in accordance with chapter 16, which has all the structural loads in it. It also points uh, or says that you need to use an effective wind area based on the dimensions of a single unit frame or one module. Uh, this may be in some cases uh, seen as overly conservative and, and that may in fact be the case. And I won't get into a discussion of this requirement, but actually Ron will, uh, Ron LaPlante will, near the end of his discussion, talk about what the SEOC committee and the report says about uh, the effective wind area that you can use. The wind loading provisions uh, are held in ASCE 7 and sort of focusing on the two that are currently in use or most widely in use in 
these, ASC 705 and ASC 710. And in neither of these provisions are, uh, excuse me, neither of these standards are there provisions that specifically cover ground or roof-mounted PV arrays. 